What is up everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video I'm going to be letting you guys into my M1 Finance portfolio and sharing with you all what's been going down in this portfolio. I've been buying some stocks, I actually trimmed a position and I've added some gold to this portfolio, so I want to share with you all kind of my strategy right now, my reasoning behind all of the trades, and kind of how I'm structuring this portfolio right now as kind of a set it and forget it type of portfolio. So all I ask from you is if you enjoy this video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me, and if you want to be further connected with the Strive Smart community, that's linked down below via the Discord chat as well as the Facebook group. So let's just jump right into it, guys. Last time I reviewed uh, my portfolio, I think I had about like 700 bucks in it. So since then, I've added about $200 in cash and the the return that we've been seeing in the portfolio has continued to go up. Last video, I think the portfolio was up 11%. Now it's up 15% since its inception, which was on the 2nd of July. My total gain right now on the portfolio is 55 bucks right now, um, and that's really just $3.98 from dividends and $51 being from market gains. And the value of the portfolio, as you guys can see right here, is $958.11 right now and I actually have 30 bucks in cash with one upcoming trade which we'll detail here in a couple of minutes. So let's go over the individual slices of my portfolio very quickly then we'll talk about what I've been doing in terms of buying and selling. So just scrolling down here you guys can see MO Altria is my biggest position right now. It's about 13.8% of my portfolio. Total return on Altria right now is 22%, guys. So I'm up a really big amount on Altria in a short amount of time. So I might consider trimming some profits here, um, especially because it's overweight in my portfolio. Again, it's 8% is the goal, but it's at 13.8%. So I might trim a bit or I might just not add to it at all and simply add to the underweight positions until this is back to um, 8%. That's kind of what I'm thinking right now. The second position is Johnson & Johnson, ticker symbol J&J, &J, up $6 on this position, up 8.1%, and this is also overweight being at 13% with the goal being at around 8%. So right now, I'm not looking to really trim my Johnson & Johnson position. I'm probably just going to let it ride until it gets back to that 8% as I add more to these underweight um, slices here. So the third slice I have, and this is actually a new one that I didn't have in my previous um, update video. This one's SPYD, and this is actually SPDR um, Portfolio S&P 500 High Dividend ETF. So this is a dividend ETF that's comprised of a bunch of different stocks, right? The expense ratio is a 0.08% right now, 4.43% dividend yield with one6 billion dollars in assets under management. So I'm a big proponent of ETFs, especially if you're looking to really be a passive investor. And again, this portfolio is meant to be mostly passive where I can add money to it and forget about it type of portfolio. So that's good. 10% um, of my portfolio is in SPYD and right now it's at about 12%. So I'm comfortable there. Not really looking to add more uh, right now at least, but maybe in the next couple of weeks if we see a dip in the market, I might add some more. So my next holding is PayPal PYPL up 2.5% right now. And this one, it's about 9% of the portfolio. And I'm not looking to add more to this whatsoever here, guys, because the goal is about 5%. And since my last video, I have kind of updated the portfolio in terms of the target percentages. And I'm kind of giving each individual stock or equity here at least 5% upward of 8% based on the potential that I see in the portfolio uh, for the long term here in, in terms of these individual stocks and really 
really that's just how I have it set up, right? So 2.5% up in PayPal here, not looking to add more again, like I said, but if we see a huge dip into the $90 range for the stock, I might add more. Facebook's the next one here, up 7% on the position. The goal of Facebook is 8% of the portfolio, but right now it's 8.9%. So this is pretty good in terms of the, uh, you know, the target and the actual here. The next position, which I might trim as well, just like Altria, is AbV, guys, ticker symbol ABBV. And since I've bought in into AbV, it's been going crazy, right? Up 20%. I believe I started buying this stock in the low 70s. Yup, average share price is 73 right now. So we're up 20% on AbV. This is a 5% goal holding of my portfolio, but it's at 8.5%. So at this point, I might trim a bit um, again, like I said, or I might just leave it, let it be, and just simply add more to the underweight slices here. So the next one's 3M, up 4% here, 7.5% uh, of my portfolio with a goal of it being 5%. So I'm just simply holding this one here, guys. Um, not looking to add more, like I mentioned in my last video, just really looking to get this to about 5% and then let it ride there um, for this portfolio. The next one's Amazon, which is one that I actually might buy more of if we see a dip here in the next couple of weeks because you can see this is actually a, a position that I want to be 8% of my portfolio, but it's at 5.5% right now, and I'm up 2% on the position, so there's really a lot of room here to grow in my opinion, but if we get that dip even further down, I'll add more at a better cost, kind of dollar cost averaging down for the long term there. So VEA is another one that I'm holding. This is an ETF, actually. Uh, it's an international ETF holding a bunch of emerging, or not really emerging companies, rather developed markets that are outside of the U.S. So I kind of want some exposure in markets that don't include the U.S. just to kind of diversify the portfolio to not strictly hold U.S. equities, right? Because at the end of the day, there's a lot more business around the world and I kind of want a piece of that to really diversify this portfolio because again, like I said, this is a set it and forget it type of portfolio for me. So this is a 6% um, goal and we're at about 4.8% here. So this is another one along with Amazon that I might add some more to here and I think I've actually been adding more to it over the past couple of weeks. So Baba here up 14%. This is right in line, 5% uh, you know, of the portfolio. It's Right now, it's at 4.5%. Now, this is one that I want to get bigger. So last time I updated you guys, SPHD was actually at the top of my list, but I actually trimmed off some of it, SPHD added more to SPYD, which actually bumped down SPHD in terms of the actual weight in the portfolio. But now I'm looking to add more to SPHD as these markets, um, if these markets rather, see a pull down. So SPHD, it's actually at 15% of my portfolio, but it's only at 4% um, right now. So I need to add a lot more to it to get to that 15% target. And I do like this one as kind of a set it and forget it ETF because it pays a 4.15% dividend yield. It's a monthly dividend payer here, and it's a low volatility ETF, meaning it's not really moving up and down like crazy over the span of a time horizon because, again, it's low volatility. The beta is low. I believe the beta on the ETF um, is actually lower than what the market is, and that really means anything below a 1.0 beta. Let's say the, the SPHD um, ETF has like a 0.9 beta. That means it's less volatile than the market, right? So I'm looking to add a bunch more to SPHD. McDonald's is actually one that I added, I believe, since the previous um, update as as well. This is one that I'm looking to buy more because McDonald's, blue chip company, I love it, global brand, right? Big dip in McDonald's. And whenever we see stocks dip like that, I'm typically buying, especially if I see the vision long term, and especially if it's a blue chip company, right? And this this portfolio here, it's mostly blue chip companies. Um, you know, you can see a bunch here on the list. So I'm interested in adding more to that. AT&T is actually the one that I trimmed um, a little bit. It's at 3% of the portfolio right here. Um, the goal is to be about 
percent. So I actually might buy a little bit more AT&T here if we do dip down um, to the $35 level. We'll see. But this new position, guys, which is about to go in is GLD, which is actually a gold trust. So I'm actually adding a bit of a hedging uh, proponent to this portfolio here with 5% of it going to be that gold trust. And that's really just honestly, but guys, because the markets right now are at all time highs. So if these markets dip, a lot of my ETFs, a lot of my equities, they're going to fall, right? That's how it works. But gold is going to potentially go up in price when that happens because people view that as a hedge to the stock market, a hedge to the economy, and kind of like a safe haven to put money when equities are falling in price. So 5%, it's going to be in gold here. Um, um, that's kind of what I'm comfortable here. Maybe I bump it to 7.5%, but probably not just keeping it at a nice 5%. Now, if we're just quickly going over to my activity, you guys can see here, I've been pretty active, right? Added 50 bucks in the on, on the 13th of November, added 40 bucks um, you know, about a week later, just added another 30 bucks, and I've been buying, right? I bought McDonald's, VEA, SPHD here, you know, I got Abbey dividends. So, this portfolio really the way I have it structured is it's a growth portfolio, but at the same time it's a, it's a value portfolio. It's a dividend portfolio. It's an income portfolio. And honestly, I just love the way I have it structured. If I went to sleep right now and woke up five years from now, I will have 100% faith in this portfolio. That's kind of how I have it structured, right? Because I have global, I have, I have global markets in here. I have, you know, high yield, you know, dividend ETFs that comprise of 25% of my portfolio. That makes me really comfortable, right? That, that's some good diversification there. You know, I have some gold in here. I have companies that I truly believe are going to rule, you know, the, the, the economy and the world here in the next couple of years, like BABA, Amazon, Facebook, these companies are dominating the world. PayPal's changing the way we pay people, right? Johnson & Johnson, healthcare, tobacco, I think is always going to be here with Altria. So these positions here, they're not going anywhere in my opinion, which is why it's a set it and forget it type portfolio. So if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know down below in the comments, what do you think about my portfolio? What do you think about M1 Finance in general? And consider leaving the video a like if you want to support the channel. And if you want to see further videos from me, consider subscribing and also hitting that notification bell. And if you guys want to use M1 Finance for yourselves, I actually have a referral link down below that if you use that referral link and sign up to the platform and fund $100, you actually get $10 back and I also get $10. So you're making really a 10% return right away by simply just putting 100 bucks into M1 because you get that $10 back, right? So that's a really good 10% return right off the bat. And again, that link is down below. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.